trip, Halloween Shorts, written and illustrated by Brian C. Hales, read by James Woodridge and Kim Churchill. Says. Do I have to take Maddie trick-or-treating? Hooray! Maddie exclaims as she runs out the door. This will be so fun. Trip rolls his eyes. Mom! It will be good for you, Trip. But are you sure you want to dress as a bear attack survivor? Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Trip drags his feet behind Maddie as she skips down the sidewalk, humming. I hope you don't expect me to hang off your shoulder all night, Liam says. We'll see, Trip replies. I don't want to be just a dumb kid with a phony blood stain on his shirt. Well, Liam says. Shush it! As Trip and Maddie approach their first house, Naomi runs up behind them. Trip, are you so excited to trick or treat together? Together? Who said anything about. I didn't see your costume at school. She interrupts. What are you supposed to be? I see you brought Liam along. Hi, Liam. Hi, Naomi, Liam replies tenderly. Love your costume. Aw, thanks. Ballerina? Yep. She lifts her arms and does a quick twirl. Anyways, Trip says, I'm just here for the candy. Let's focus on what's most important, shall we? Trip, Naomi, and Maddie excitedly knock on their first door. It opens, and the man who answers looks down at them, stroking his cat. What? Uh, trick or treat? Trip holds up his candy bucket, and the girls follow his lead. No! The guy shuts the door. The children frown and look at one another, stunned. Trip gets an idea. Anybody got some matches? At their next house, a lady answers with a heaping bowl of goodies and compliments the girls' costumes. Oh, you look so cute. A dancer? And what an adorable unicorn. She tosses king-sized candy bars into Naomi's bag and Maddie's bucket. Then she looks over at Trip. She loses her smile as she tries to guess what he's dressed up as. She gives up and without comment, throws a fun-sized candy bar into his pail. Trip notices the size difference and glares back at the woman. Hey, what gives? Before he can complain further, a horde of other trick-or-treaters crowds past them for a handout. He sulks off. Trip sees a life-size scarecrow sitting in a rocking chair on another porch and runs up to poke its leg. Liam and the girls hesitate at the bottom of the steps. It's fake, Trip says. Come on, what are you afraid of? Eyeing the stationary figure, they slowly walk up to the doormat. As Trip rings the doorbell, the scarecrow lurches out at them. Naomi screams, Maddie's eyes go wide with terror, and all except Trip sprint away in a mad dash to the next house. He makes sure to secure his candy first. Told you it was fake. It's not a real scarecrow. It's just a dude dressed up as one. The scarecrow shakes his head and leans back into position for the next group of kids. Across the street, they notice their neighbor's decorations to create the ultimate monster house. Some people know how to Halloween, Trip says with admiration. How come you didn't bring Arnie along? Maddie asks Trip. He didn't want to come, Liam answers. Too many kids to ruffle his feathers. Where's Sparkle Glittertail? Trip asks. Or is that who you dressed up as? Maddie gives Trip an angry look. No, I'm not Sparkle Glittertail. She's sick. I'm Rainbow Blossom. Trip scratches his head. I thought that's who you were last year. Last year, I was Buttercup. Honestly, Trip. Naomi says. It's like you don't understand girls at all. Trip nods. That's true. I think we'll skip that house. Naomi says, passing by the clown. But the sugar! Trip throws up his hands, unwilling to go up to the door alone. He looks into his bucket. This is the worst haul I've had in years. The girls are undeterred. It's just a clown. Haven't you ever been to the circus? Look, it's got polka dots, colorful ones. 
The girls turn their backs and start walking. Trip tries to muster the courage to approach on his own, but finally scuffs his foot in the dirt as he sighs defeatedly. Ah, nuts! As he follows Naomi and Maddie, Trip hears the clown from behind them. How come no one ever comes to my house on Halloween? A group of dressed up teenagers passes by them on the following approach, and a gray haired mom asks them with disdain. How old are you? Trip turns to the woman. You're never too old to beg for free candy, lady. Yeah, Naomi says. They're choosing childhood over partying. Ease off. A much younger woman at the nearest door turns back to the teenagers. Take the candy. She gives them twice as much while looking pointedly at the commenter. No one answers the door at the house at the end of the block, but as the kids walk away, an upstairs light comes on, revealing the silhouette of a man peering down at them as they leave. That's not creepy at all, Tripp says, staring at the ghostly figure. New rule, Naomi says, raising a hand. No more haunted houses. That's a dumb rule, Tripp says, looking back into his pitiful candy bucket. That's where stories come from. Come on, at this rate, we'll be out here till midnight. I thought Mom said you must have Maddie home by nine, Liam says. Heaven help me, Tripp answers, holding up his candy pail. I will fill this thing if it kills us. Us? Naomi exclaims. Nope, you're on your own. See ya. Kamikaze and Stellar. Peering out over the crime-ridden metropolis, Kamikaze listens carefully past the echoes of honking taxis and murmuring crowds. He knows full well what dark deeds transpire inside the shadows of the city's dirty underbelly. Criminality cringes at the mere mention of his name. Drug lords and kingpins shrink at the sight of him. Felons and transgressors everywhere shiver at the thought of an encounter with the caped vigilante of justice. Listen to them, Kamikaze says. All those unsuspecting victims in a city where crime never sleeps. No good deed goes unpunished, and adults treat children like porcelain dolls locked inside their china cabinets, precious things they're all paranoid of losing. But they will lose everything. That is, if Kamikaze and Stellar don't intervene. Are you referring to us in the third person? Stellar asks. Quiet, or I'll call you Robin. The two unsuspecting thieves, unaware of Kamikaze's leaping figure and the dark streak of feathers that is his sidekick, Stellar, run frantically. Bags of stolen goods dangle from their gloved hands. Police sirens sound from afar. The heroes fly through the air at dizzying speed, just over the fray, vengeance in their eyes. Tuned in to police radio frequencies, Kamikaze can hear the dispatch orders, but he will stop the evildoer sooner than any cop, much sooner. Do you get that? Stellar says, suddenly swooping away. Radio chatter says a large Kodiak beer has escaped from the city zoo. I can see to that if you've got this in hand. No, snaps Kamikaze. Focus. We must bring these thieves to justice. It takes priority. Stellar banks to the right and rebounds midair. Ah, fine. Kamikaze drops like a missile through the night and zeroes in on the two flying shadows. Ready to set up? and follow me in. I think we can cut them off. You think? Stella retracts his wings and dives for it. Oh, yes. Kamikaze sees the bags of valuables in their grasp and knows what they stole. Talon's out. Sharp beak ready, wings unfurled. Let's do this. Stella readies the cables as the two approach the robbers at bewildering velocity. Stella unmasks the thieves to reveal a husband and wife duo like Bonnie and Clyde, Kamikaze utters in disgust, a deadly blur on approach. The escaped Kodiak bear suddenly appears from a side street and runs toward them, momentarily distracting the criminals, and Kamikaze takes advantage. As Stellar circles their feet, Kamikaze dive bombs from behind, his nanocarbon cables tangling around their legs and bringing them down hard. Thought you could escape me? 
he growls as they skid to a halt under a busy overpass. We caught you, says Kamikaze. Any final words before we put you away for good? You don't understand, says the red-handed scumbag. We work for the Internal Revenue Service. We're simply collecting our annual daddy tax. Nice try, says Kamikaze. No one pays taxes in the beloved city, and we don't recognize any such authority here. Told you you wouldn't get away with it, hun, says the wife. The Transylvania House. You about ready to go out and spook the town, Trip? Mom asks. Just about. Trip throws a white sheet costume that Mom made over Liam so he too can be a ghost for Halloween. Can't breathe, Liam gasps. Can't see. Let's go round and knock on doors. Oh, suck it up, Trip says. At least you don't have to forage for food across the Arctic tundra. Later, after trick-or-treating all evening, as Trip, Liam, Naomi, and Maddie near the edge of their neighborhood, Naomi says, I'm just glad my mom didn't come this year. And then, in a mocking tone, Stay off the grass. Only take one. Did you say thank you? Wait for your brother. Trip scoffs. Or sister. Naomi turns to Maddie. I'm glad you're here, Mads. Me too, Liam says. Thanks. Maddie smiles at Liam before giving Trip the stink eye. This Halloween will be nothing like those that came before, Trip says. This year, we visit the Transylvania house. I heard they give out monster helpings. Why do the neighbors call it that? Naomi asks. I think it's because Vlad the Impaler lives there, Trip says, staring up at the dark manor. Naomi shakes her head. I thought the guy's name was Brad. Trip rolls his eyes. Yeah, as if a pair of undead vampires would ever name their unholy offspring Brad. Sheesh, Naomi, get with the times. They run up and ring the doorbell, but no one answers. They left our lights on and aren't answering the door? Trip scowls. Brimstone. The front door creaks open of its own accord. The kids shout, trick or treat, but no one is there. Hello? Naomi walks inside, and the rest tentatively follow. Is anybody home? Trip noses around for candy. Liam sniffs at the cold air. I don't think this is a great idea. We should go. The door slams shut behind them, and Maddie screams. (coughs) Maddie! Trip says. Shush! You're going to give me a heart attack. Wouldn't that be delicious? comes a voice that sounds like mom's, minus the momness. Oh look, another glorious morning, says another similar female voice. Morning? Naomi says, confused. The vampire brides, Trip whispers in terror and fascination. They all gasp as a tall, well-dressed man appears from the shadows to join his crowd of brides, his skin as pale as toilet paper. Are you Vlad? Trip says, mesmerized by his presence. The man chuckles. <laughs> no, no, you can call me Brad. Naomi shoots Trip a dirty look, which Trip pretends to ignore. What is your blood type? One of the women asks Naomi. A plus? You mean A positive? Naomi says. No, I mean. A plus. She giggles. We're about to sit down for a meal together, Brad says. Would you like to stay for a bite? Uh, we'd love to, but... Tripp's mind races to come up with an excuse. We've got to get home and take inventory of our candy. Ah, Brad says. I see. Priorities. Tripp gulps. Rain check? Brad smiles, his teeth like ivory daggers. Sure. Something howls from down in the basement, accompanied by other strange voices calling out amidst clanking and moaning sounds. Trip turns to Naomi and whispers, 
They're keeping prisoners downstairs. We've got to do something. We've got to help them. The brides begin to approach. Run! Naomi shouts, and they scramble for the stairs as the women transform into bats. Don't let them bite you! Yells Trip. As the kids near the bottom of the stairs to the basement, they stop short and stare in disbelief. Whoa! Says the wolfman. It's a bunch of tykes! Aww, look at their costumes, says the mummy. So cute! Wait, Brad's not holding you captive? Trip says to the monsters. Against your will? Ah, little bro, we're just hanging, enjoying this fine holiday season together. Would you join us? I'm scared, says Maddie, staring up at the Frankenstein monster, who looks back at them from the corner. Can we please leave? But you've just arrived, comes Brad's voice from behind, blocking their way out. Yes, Maddie, Trip declares. I told Mom I'd get you home safe, and that's what I'll do. Trip grabs a huge handful of candy from his trick-or-treat bucket and hurls it at Brad. The candy hits the vampire in the face, and he falls back as the kids dart around him up the stairs. They dodge the vats and make for the front door. The monsters chase after them. You don't need to be afraid of us, says the wolfman. We're just having a costume party. Out! That way! Naomi screams as they shoot out the door and leap from the porch. Whatever, says Brad, rubbing his forehead as they watch the kids escape down the street. Happy Halloween! Trip, Naomi, Maddie, and Liam sprint toward their own houses, panting out the fright of their monster encounter. As they near home, Trip notices his candy bucket is empty. What? Nothing? The girls check their halls. Looks like we've still got ours, says Naomi. You're going to share, though, right? Trip says, utterly defeated. No, says Naomi. It's your fault. You should have been more responsible. Besides, when we asked you to share your candy two years ago, you left us high and dry. She's not wrong, says Liam. Two years ago? Trip huffs indignantly. Monster! As Naomi leaves, Maddie lifts her candy bucket, offering it to her brother. You can have all my candy, Trip. Thanks, Maddie Cakes. But I suppose we can share. Maddie grins and kisses him on the cheek. I will tell Mommy and Daddy how sweet you've been. Please don't. This has been Trip Halloween Shorts, written and illustrated by Brian C. Hales, read by James Woodrich and Kim Churchill. Trip, an energetic and imaginative seven year old, spurred by his obsession with candy, dives into trouble and adventure in his next series of outings with Liam, his beloved Kodiak bear, Stellar, Arnie's superhero counterpart, Naomi, his childhood friend, and Maddie, his little sister, in three audacious Halloween-themed short stories. Tag along on all three adventures, entitled Trick or Treat, Kamikaze, and Stellar, and The Transylvania House, but beware, Trip's imagination might just take you places you may never have imagined. Trip, Halloween Shorts, now available at Amazon and other book retailers.